It's another edition of Time About the Movies, and today we're taking a look at the movies of April 23rd, 1993. Uh, four movies to look at, and uh, honestly, this should be a very quick one, because for the first time in a while, I have not seen any of the four movies that we're going to address here today. But we are going to run through them real quickly, so let's not waste any more time. Let's just jump right on into it, and we'll start off with the first movie that we have here. Dr. Dre and Ed Lover in the comedy, Who's the Man? All right, Holmes, you're the victim of another Dr. Dre and Ed Lover masterpiece. Yo, man, what did you do to my head? No, you gotta hold your head at the angle, brother. Women gonna think you a big Wesley Snipes. Like, no, Wesley. I got Wesley. Man, I wanted the two brothers cut my taxes. They were a couple of nobodies. What's up, Cherise? What the hell are you doing telling people I'm sleeping with you? Who couldn't cut it anywhere. Is anything ever gonna happen to us? Someday, my brother. The police force is Iron Brothers. Uh-uh, man, uh-uh. Ain't trying to be the man. Dre, you trying to be the man? I am not trying to be the man. Give me one reason. Rodney King! But Harlem needs heroes. I want us to sign to the case so we can catch the guy ourselves. No matter who they are. That's up to our staff. Being a police officer is about one thing. Who knows what that is? Harassing black people. Of evil to make the streets safe for you people to walk on. Look at you looking like before and after. Here's your assignment. All of Harlem. I want all crime and drugs stamped out by six o'clock. Okay? Let's get them. Not going well at all. Who's the Man? A film directed by Ted Demi, starring Dr. Dre and Ed Lover, with Dennis Leary, Colin Quinn, and a who's who of hip hop, including Naughty by Nature, Ice T, Cypress Hill, Flavor Flav, KRS One, Heavy D, House of Pain, Salt and Pepper, Criss Cross, and Bushwick Bill. Drop it! Oh. Come on, fellas, you know the bad guys are gonna lose. That's word up. Why don't you call me when you're ready for dessert, big boy? So, Yo MTV Raps was something that. It was right around. It came out around the time I was born. I think it came out about four months before I was born. And uh, it was a little bit early for me. But I remember. I think I remember my first MTV experience being when they would show episodes of Rocco's Modern Life on MTV and Ren and Stimpy, and then later on I figured, I, I grew to know more about MTV as the, in the middle of the 90s with Beavis and Butthead, Daria, all those type of thi- all those type of shows, but um, I wasn't around when, I really didn't pay much attention to Yo! MTV Raz because, I mean, honestly, I was four years old when this movie came out, so I really didn't know too much about this about that show or this movie in particular, for obvious reasons because I was still too a little too young for this, but, um, I mean, the movie itself doesn't look like it's that bad. It actually it does look like it's a ton of fun. You got Dr. Dr. It's like I said, Dr. Dre, Ed Lover. A big cast in this movie. Salt and Pepper, uh, Colin Quinn, Dennis Leary, Bernie Mac is in this. This is the first movie with Terrence Howard. Uh, Ice-T is in here. Karen Duffy, uh, Vincent Pastore, and a lot of cameos in here. I'm looking at this list here. Bill Bellamy, uh, Buster Rhymes. Uh, let me see what else is here. Fat Five Freddy. Uh, Flavor Flav, Heavy D, House of Pain, Kid Capri, uh, Naughty by Nature, uh, Mickey D, Penny Hardaway, Queen Latifah, Run DMC, Scotty Pippen, um, just all these names here that I'm very familiar with, and I've never even heard. I never even heard about this movie until the mid 2000s. I think it was actually on the videotape for uh, Ninja Turtles Three. I remember this trailer being on. Oh, uh, I see another one name I remember. Chris Cr- Chris Cross. They were actually they were in the trailer, so I wouldn't know that. But um, but um, yeah, I never saw, I've never seen this movie before. But it looked like a movie that could be fun for what it is. It honestly looks like something on the same lines as Disorderlies the, with the Fat Boys, and um, that's a, that's, a, that's another one of those movies where there isn't really a whole lot of it's not really all that exciting, but in terms of a story, but it is a fun movie overall if you're in, if you have the right mindset to it. And I think this movie kind of has the fun. 
mindset to it. Um, honestly, it could be so. It actually could be something pretty good. It's something that I've been wanting to see for a long time now. I've just never gotten around to seeing it, but I haven't wanted to see it. So maybe one day I'll definitely check it out. But um, that's really much. That's really all I gotta say about this movie in particular. I knew about it from the Ninja Turtles three tape, but um, other than that, that's pretty much all I know about this movie. Except also for that um. Ted Demi directed, and Ted Demi is, of course, the... Is he related to Jonathan Demi? I'm... Yes, that's his uncle. Jonathan De Demi is his uncle. And uh, he's gone on to... Ted Demi actually went on to direct some pretty good movies, including The Ref with Dennis Leary, Life with Eddie Murphy and Martin Lawrence, Blow with Johnny Depp and Penelope Cruz. So uh, it's in it was interesting to see, to know that this was his first movie that he directed. So... All my my interest in this continues to be peaked for this. I really want to see what this movie is about. Maybe one day, like I said, I'll definitely check it out. But and I'm not in an immediate rush to see it. But one time, one day, I will definitely see if see if about uh, checking it out. So anyway, as I'm done with the mumbling right now, let's move on to the next movie, and that is Mike Binder's Indian Summer. Is it me? I don't remember smelling this much like urine. You've always smelled like urine. That's how you could find the place when you came up the hill in the dark. You know, Gwen and I run three miles every morning as a warm-up before we work out. Right, baby? Right. We really ought to spend the rest of this week coming up with an elaborate way to kill those two. You're not actually going to make us take a swimming test, are you? First thing at camp, you always have to take a swimming test. Go! <laughs> Not even close. Too bad. You've gotten kind of sexy. Very, very good. Oh. He's a moron. No wonder you're so attracted to him. I hope I didn't offend any of you. No. Touchstone Pictures presents the story of eight friends returning to the best summer of their lives. Being up here is just making me so emotional, you know? Somebody really needs to just smack me one. Oh, I want to be a kid again. Indian Summer. We've already talked about Mike Binder's previous film that he did, Crossing the Bridge, and he would later go on to direct such films as Blank Man, uh, The Upside of Anger, and Man About Town, Rain Over Me. Black or white, and um, it's got a pretty decent cast to it overall. You've got um, Alan Arkin, Diane Lane, Bill Paxton, Elizabeth Perkins, uh, Kevin Pollack, Julie Warner, Kimberly Williams. Even Sam Raimi has a role in this movie. Um, like I said, I haven't seen it before. I can't really comment on it too much, but it honestly doesn't look too bad of a movie. It's a movie I'd probably check out one day just because of the cast alone, but I haven't heard too many good things about it, but... The cast alone makes me curious about what kind of a movie it is, so one day I'll definitely check it out again, But um, or I should say definitely check it out, because like I said, I haven't seen it before, but um, yeah, that's Indian Summer, so let's move on to the next movie, and that is Timothy Hutton in the Dark Half. George, you become attached to him. Locked away until he needs it. These behaviors could be interpreted as schizophrenia. Away from the light, safe in the shadows. I wrote those words, and I have no recollection of doing it. But sometimes, secrets take on a life of their own. Thad Beaumont thought he didn't need George Stark anymore. The American way of death. That's it. He served his purpose. Time to lay him to rest. But George is not about to go quietly. You really don't realize what you like when you write those books, do you? It's like watching Jekyll turn into Hyde. We're here to question you in connection with a capital crime. Evidence says you did. George Stark has somehow come to life. Hello, George. I've come closer to believing ghost stories. You're talking about a man who never was. No! 
take over your life. Can't you see that? Based upon a book by Stephen King comes George A. Romero's masterful vision of a nightmare come true. Are you ready? Just waiting on you. The Dark Half. So as you can probably tell, this is another one of those Orion Pictures movies that were made back in the early part of the 90s but didn't get released because Orion Pictures was going through bankruptcy. And so it took them a long time to take this off of the shelf because, and it eventually saw its release and it was largely forgotten at the box office. But uh, reviews for it aren't that bad. Most of the people that, that talk about the positives about this movie are talking about the performance of Timothy Hutton who gives this really good – it looks like he gives this really good, crazy psychological performance, psychotic performance, I should say. And um, it's probably going to be the best thing about this particular movie is the fact that Hutton is really doing something that's kind of outside of his ty his type of performance. And um, it definitely looks like a ton of fun. It looks like a really silly. It looks like a really ridiculous movie, but also kind of a chilling movie. Like I said, I think the reason that this movie has somewhat of a legacy to it is because of Hutton's off off performance from what he usually does and um yeah it could definitely be something pretty good but um yeah and uh george R and george romero directed this movie it's actually the third film he made with a major film studio behind it of course creep show by warner brothers and then monkey shines which i think was mgm no it was also orion pictures but um yeah, and, uh, you know, George Romero usually liked to work with a low budget without a major studio behind him, and, and this movie in particular, he was facing a lot of problems behind the scenes, so uh, you can kind of tell why he didn't do a whole lot of st studio-type pictures, but um, most of his work has been pretty... Most of his work, obviously, has been pretty good, so... But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I got to say about this one, because I haven't seen it, but definitely looks like it could be pretty good, so maybe one day I'll definitely check out The Dark Half, so... With that said, let's move on to the last movie of the week, and that is Map of the Human Heart. Experience the excitement, the portrayal, and the sexual intrigue in Map of the Human Heart, a mesmerizing romantic epic. I fell in love with a beautiful girl. I found out she was two-timing me. The first really great film of the year, Ray Siskel and Ebert. Two thumbs up, way up, for Map of the Human Heart. Don't miss this startling epic of seduction, rated R. Now playing at a theater near you. So this is directed by Vincent Ward, who would later become more known for his work on What Dreams May Come, which is a movie that's heavily polarizing, but, um, I don't know. I thought it was all right. We'll definitely, we'll delve into more of that when we get to that movie's release, but, um, this movie was actually made by Ward when he was originally going to do the script for Alien, th when he was planning to direct the script for Alien 3 that never happened but so it led him to this and uh sounds like it was the right move because this movie has a hu huge critical following a good critical following and it looks pretty good too you've got uh Patrick Bergen you've got Anne Perot from Innocent Blood and La Femme Nikita uh John Cusack is also in this movie in one of his early film roles Jason Scott Lee is in here um Ben Mendelsohn a good cast overall, and um, it looks pretty good. It does look like a pretty good movie. Um, yeah, like I said, nothing really more I could add to it because I haven't seen it, but it definitely looks pretty good. So one day I might check it out. But um, there you go. That's Map of the Human Heart. And so on that note, we wrap up another edition of Time About the Movies. Next time we meet, we'll look at five new movies, including Three of Hearts, uh, Splitting Hairs with Eric Idle and Rick Moranis, Blood In and Blood Out. The Night We Never Met, and also The Pickle. So five movies to look at next time. Uh, but until then, thank you very much for watching. And if you want to see more videos like this, uh, please hit the playlist on the next page. Check out the previous episode. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for another episode. So thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. And until then, as always, take care.